Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Rennie, and uh, currently I'm leading the multimodal group at IBM Research that is affiliated with both uh, Watson and the new AI Foundations uh, part of research. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about a trick called self-critical sequence training that helped propagate us to the top of the MS Coco leaderboard by a significant margin. Uh, here's a picture of the current official leaderboard. And as you can see, uh, as has been the case for about the last five to six months, uh, we're significant, significantly ahead in terms of the core metrics, CIDR D, which we optimized directly on. Uh, the story has evolved uh, significantly in the last week or so, so I'll get to that in, uh, toward the end of the talk. So why image captioning? Uh, I think it's just a great problem. Um, and as others today have discussed, it really the challenge is to be able to compose, uh, compose with respect to objects, attributes, and relationships between them, uh, and express compositions in natural language is a very interesting problem. So here, um, just search, nearest neighbor search does not work. There's just too many. The, the space of images is just too vast. And so we want generative models that really can compose. And if you, if you can rob, uh, robustly compose uh, a description of, of images in the wild, you, you really do understand something deeper about the world, I would argue. OK, so the technique I'm going to discuss um, is agnostic to the specific model used. But just to get it out of the way, we use the standard uh, captioning model, uh, specifically uh, ResNet, to generate image features, and then an LSTM decoder that uh, we have attention uh, optionally on as input to the LST LSTM and optionally on as uh, input to the posterior word generator. So sequence modeling. Uh, standard training methods lead to a phenomenon that Ronzato characterized as exposure bias. Essentially, we condition on ground truth rather than generated words, and this causes mismatch at test time. There's several methods have been proposed for compensating for exposure bias, including scheduled sampling, professor forcing, and uh, discriminative uh, sequence training. Uh, here we're going to focus on solving the issue with reinforcement learning, uh, specifically with policy gradient. This is a great approach because it's evaluation based. Essentially, the system can explore alternative explanations and try and find better ones. And we can optimize non-differentiable metrics directly. <clears throat> so if we treat this as an RL problem, uh, the environment would be our image features and uh, previous words that we've generated. The actions, are, in this case, are words. And our policy is the posterior over the next word, or in general, the policy over the sentences. So the reward is, in this case, we, is our training metric. And our objective is to maximize expected future reward. So policy grading with reinforce, uh, it's quite simple. Essentially, uh, as you see there, we can turn the gradient back into an expectation by uh, multiplying and dividing by the probability. And that's why you have the log coming into the gradient there. And amazingly, this expectation, we can approximate with a single sample. So instead of training using CE, uh, we can just take a sample and process the mini batch as normal, uh, except uh, with a weight. Uh, that's uh, determined by the metric, uh, which is the reward. So the problem with this technique is that it tends to have high variance. And as has been shown on several problems over the last several years, uh, having a baseline can really improve the situation. It's amazing that this stuff actually uh, works. So the baseline can reduce the variance of the gradients. and. Uh, it's unbiased as long as it's not a function of the, of the token, in this case, the word that you've sampled. Uh, so here is, I'm just showing that uh, a constant comes out of the sum 
because it's independent of the word, word sampled. And so the technique is unbiased. So let's just zoom in literally here for a second and look at the gradient of the posterior activations of the SOCMAX function. So here, this, this is just the conventional gradient that you see if you uh, write down the gradient with respect to this CE. The sample is treated here as the label, and it's just reweighted by the normalized reward. <clears throat> this can be back propagated through the network to optimize the parameters of the model. So the baseline or value function is typically learned. And for example, in Mixer, uh, it's just a linear function of the hidden units of uh, the particular time slot where the word is being generated. Uh, so centering reduces variance, but the estimation error remains. So the idea here with self-critical sequence training is to baseline with the reward of the test time inference algorithm. Essentially, we usually use beam search when we're decoding. And if we baseline with the reward obtained by our current model, and we only give positive reward to sentences that are better than the current output, we are guaranteed to improve our model. So uh, we can decode in any way we wish during training. Normally, we decode just greedily during training because it requires only an adi one additional forward pass. Uh, so here's a, a depiction of what I just described. We sample and feedback the word. Uh, this is a standard decode, decoder uh, setup for LSTMs. And then we uh, perform a second forward pass uh, according to the inference algorithm here, greedy decoding, and then we normalize the reward accordingly. So the additional cost is actually just a factor of a third. And uh, actually, even when normalizing out that factor, uh, you, s you still get faster convergence, as I'll uh, show in a, in a little while. So uh, there's several advantages. One is it, the, the technique remains unbiased, and it optimizes the true sequence level evaluation metric you're interested in. Uh, it avoids having to learn or train uh, estimates of expected future reward. <clears throat> And as I mentioned, only rewards that uh, are higher than the current output, than the reward of, obtained by the current output of the uh, uh, test time algorithm uh, are a net positive result. So the gradients, as I'll show, have lower variance, and SGD training becomes more effective. Um, it's being used extensively. Uh, you can just Google it. The code is available on GitHub already in uh, pretty much every major deep learning framework. The technique can be generalized in several ways. Uh, for example, you can do context-dependent uh, self-critical sequence training, where you baseline with uh, dependent on the context of the previous samples, and then just run the inference algorithm for the uh, suffix of the sentence in this case. You can also make it a true actor-critic algorithm by using it as the primary reward signal. Um, in general, I think these generalizations are important, but on MS Coco, uh, they, they only gave a uh, very small gain, so I won't talk more about these. Um, so here's a plot of the results of the self-critical sequence training versus a mixer variant that we were comparing against. Now, initially we had uh, more significant gains over Mixer, but after uh, detailed optimization, Mixer closed the gap somewhat. But still, even with extensive optimization, we see both for greedy and beam search decoding, uh, we see a gain with SCST. Um, this is an interesting plot here that shows the gradient variance uh, over the training set. And Interestingly, uh, SCST actually increases the variance of the reward signal during the first epoch, which uh, we believe helps exploration. You can see that the entropy, which is on the right-hand plot there, is higher. Now, uh, so that's the exploration part, and it would be interesting to try and 
uh, generalize and gain more control over this, but you can see in the explo exploitation phase, much lower variance using SCST. Um, so here's some examples of SCST working. Uh, we can see it can, it can com compose quite well. Uh, these are, most of these images are from the out of context data set uh, that Jin Choi and his colleagues uh, released some time ago. Uh, I should mention that we found that on MS Coco itself that uh, the model, several models that I'm going to discuss uh, perform very similarly. So we focused on uh, uh, the composition issue and, and tried to see how well the, the models would generalize. So the second, the second image similarly shows that uh, a bird that's not seen during training it comp composes its relation to the bowl pretty nicely. Um, again, the 1,000-pound uh, elephant in the room is detected out of context pretty nicely, as is uh, <laughs> a strangely sized phone. Um, it's not perfect, of course. Uh, it's limited by the amount of training data it receives. And you, here you can see that it detects that the person is doing a trick on the dirt bike, but uh, I'm pretty sure he's not going to land that trick in this case. Um, it understands that there are, there's a man in the road and there's a truck, but I'm pretty sure that that's not how a human would compose uh, a description of this image. And here, it doesn't seem to understand rockets. It thinks the smoke is cauliflower and uh, does actually understand that there's a sky and some smoke present. Um, so in terms of results on MS Coco, uh, we tested several variants of models. In short, uh, the attention models perform much better, uh, which is to be expected. Um, when we turn on uh, reinforcement learning, we get, with our techniques, uh, essentially 10 cider points of gain. Uh, this is uh, a repeat of the current official leaderboard. On the unofficial leaderboard, uh, an MS Coco war is broken out in the last week, and we have several uploads uh, that are edging out our system uh, that was ahead for about six months, uh, which is great. Uh, it's exciting to see people uh, still trying to do better on this task. Um, so in terms of current and future work, certainly an issue is metrics, and I think people in the field understand this, that uh, these hand, handcrafted metrics don't capture very well the essence of the problem. Uh, it's nice, MS Coco is useful for uh, determining how well you're optimizing your system, but I'm not sure that it expresses at all how well it will work in the field. And some of the work on adversarial learning, I think, is very important here. You can use SCST to normalize your signal when you're doing adversarial learning uh, or using any other metric. Uh, exploration is certainly a very active research area. Um, and uh, the integration of these systems with localization systems, language models, as we've heard something about, and knowledge graphs is certainly of paramount importance in the near future. And uh, larger data sets are definitely going to be a key part of uh, fu further progress. <laughs>